Welcome back. It is still Wednesday, September the 11th, an auspicious day, by the way. Indeed. Um, my guest in this segment is Hendrik de Pachter, and we're going to be talking about the absence of dread. Mm. What does that mean? And why well, are we talking about it? Uh, we're talking about that because uh, it's been my observation uh, that with uh, the mainstream media in particular, there seems to be a focus on mainstream media having us fear certain things that we ought not to fear and not fear certain things that we really ought to fear. And if I may uh, just uh, expand on that a little bit, uh, Jack, I was uh, noticing that with uh, the United States ramping up its uh, war on Iran, its uh, word war on Iran, uh, that uh, the uh, the uh, bulletin of atomic scientists had moved their clock forward, their doomsday clock forward to two minutes to midnight, which is uh, the lowest or the closest has ever been to our human midnight. Really, the yes. closest? Yes, in wow. 2018, wow. Uh, it was the, it was at two uh, in uh, two minutes two in 1953, I think, when the Soviets exploded their first hydrogen bomb, but now it's back to two again. And in 2007, very interestingly, the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists added uh, climate change or climate crisis to their formula in determining how close we are to doomsday. And I was reflecting on how when I was a kid at the age of 10, I remember standing on the balcony in Montreal and listening to the sirens that the city uh, set off in order to warn citizens what, would ha what the sound would be when the Soviets and the Americans started to exchange their missiles. This was 1962, the Cuban Missile Crisis. And of course, it was my first presentiment of massive global death. I understood at that time, at the tender age of 10, that all humans could be wiped out in this f ferocious, fiery war. And that knowledge, at such a tender age, stayed with me for many years, probably about 15 or 20. But during the course of time, what has happened is that there have been many steps taken towards reducing uh, the uh, nuclear tension. And uh, this particularly took effect in the 80s. They were preceded by a number of things like the Partial Test Ban Treaty in 63, which was a really good thing because 500 bombs had already been exploded in the atmosphere and scientists who are determining whether or not we can call this age the anthropocentric age or the Anthropocene uh, determined that they could mark by the uh, presence of nuclear uh, fallout all over the world a certain kind of marker in our history. Uh, in 1968, we had a nuclear non-proliferation treaty. In 1972, we had the anti-ballistic uh, the, uh, the anti missile treaty, which limited uh, uh, short-range missiles. We had a test ban treaty in 1974. In 1988, we had an intermediate-range uh, nuclear forces treaty. And all of these things basically caused us to forget that really the amount of nuclear bombs have gone from uh, the, the completely obscene and insane to uh, hyper overkill. And that's actually an improvement. And so here we are in hyper overkill and we're all feeling a little bit more relaxed about nuclear war. And so the huge marches that were characteristic of the 60s in uh, England in particular and the enormous marches that I participated on in the 70s in Vancouver, they're things of the past. They morphed into Earth Day, et cetera, et cetera. Nobody's got time for nuclear war no anymore. No one's got time <laughs> for nuclear war anymore. And what I noticed is that within myself, I started to worry less about the bomb. And really, uh, that's insane because the, the amount of overkill that is still present is, uh, is uh, enormous. 100 bombs can create a nuclear winter for the whole planet. And we've got uh, at least uh, 1,550 nuclear warheads on each side of the Russia-US equation without co uh, considering the madmen in uh, the UK, France, China, Israel, India, 
Pakistan, North Korea. Uh, so we've got way too many bombs to ever survive any kind of nuclear exchange. And with, uh, with Trump ramping up this hatred towards Iran and itching for a battle, uh, the people who really are concerned about our survival are pu pushing the clock to two minutes to midnight. Uh, can I just say, yes. when you mention Trump, I think that's the one place where both the media and the Democrats right. kind of support what he's doing. Yeah, let's have another war. They're, they're equally insane, I think. I, I, I certainly wouldn't argue with you. Um, the, uh, the thing that uh, I like what Greta uh, Thunberg is saying is uh, support the science. And the scientists are saying, the atomic scientists are saying we're two minutes from midnight. So I'm not interested in what the politicians are saying because we cannot believe the politicians. The politicians are playing their game of reducing weapons of mass destruction from the grossly obscene to the hyper ridiculous. So that to me is not any, any improvement. And what I feel has happened is that this kind of uh, relaxation about the bomb has transferred into other areas of our existence so that uh, we're told time and again, well, is there really anthropogenic, human-caused climate change? I mean, anthrop are we in the Anthropocene? Are we really changing? And, and through control of media, we are being told, don't worry about it, relax. On the other hand, we are being told by media that we should be really worried about other things. A great example was a, a month or two ago, the lead item on the, new, the CBC News at the 8 o'clock radio show was that a, unfortunately a young man had died of a bat bite here in British Columbia. Now, that is a tragedy. It's a personal tragedy. It deeply affects a family. But the last item on that 10-minute news item was the fact that it was about 20 degrees warmer in the Arctic than it was in Victoria that day. And uh, those 20 degrees are affecting entire civilizations, wiping out Inuit culture, and the threat to humanity is so great from climate uh, crisis that I really was perturbed and angry that the uh, CBC had decided to focus on if it bleeds, it leads. I did some research. I have found that about four people in Canada have died of bat bites in the last 30 years. We know that thousands of people have already died from the climate crisis. Just think of Hurricane Dorian, think of Hurricane Katrina, think of the outrageous fires happening all around the world. Yet we're being asked to consider as a, the lead item that an unfortunate death has occurred because of a bat bite and we should be cautious about bats. Look out for the bats, right? When uh, that the planet is roasting. So I've got real trouble with how um, media and government and politicians have reduced the sense of dread that we ought to feel about crises like nuclear war or nuclear weapons and uh, the climate emergency, but instead we should be worried about uh, vaccines and uh, bat bites and things that do really kill people, we can't deny that, but by no measure do they have the same impact that these very uh, large uh, political decisions have on our lives, including nuclear weapons, nuclear energy, uh, the oil and gas industry, uh, and many other you, things. I'll give you a local one uh, about it maybe six months or so after John Horgan was elected Premier of British Columbia, he said there's no business case for rail in, uh, in, Vic in Greater Victoria, mm -hmm. right? Right. That was given a mention and it was gone the next day. Right. And, you know, in terms of saving ourselves, saving mm -hmm. any kind of future, we've got to move to trains. I mean, that's sure. obvious. So here's mm -hmm. the premier, the NDP premier, right. saying there's no business case. I think he also appointed someone as head of BC Transit, who also has no interest in trains. Right. I think I'm not mm -hmm. sure, but so you know the media doesn't even mention it. But we have a huge fight that you know has been created by our city council and the media working together over bike lanes, you mm -hmm. know, and 
granted, it, 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 it's crazy, but that's not our transportation problem. Our transportation mm -hmm. problem is that our transportation system is murdering us right. and our right. children's right. future. So, you know, what mm -hmm. are we going to dread? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, I dread going, going over the Malahat in a car. Uh, just, uh, I think, two weeks ago, the Malahat was again shut down for three or four hours because of, a, of an accident. And uh, this is something that politicians, including John Horgan, who I spoke to in 2006 about this issue, uh, he was then trying to drive a road through the Goldstream Park to get to uh, Shawnigan Lake, which, thank God, the Stantec study shot down. But we know that 28,000 cars pass the Malahat every day. You, you charge him a toonie, you've got $56,000 a day to fund rail. So it's really a no-brainer, but they'd rather have us uh, worry about how safe we are in the Malahat, which is uh, an averagely safe highway. It's no more dangerous than any other highway here in British Columbia. What, what I always hear from people who travel it mm -hmm. is they always say the problem is there's no enforcement. Right. And so anybody who wants to drive crazily it goes ahead and does it. Sure, and, yeah. and that's and easily why, solved why too. Why not solve that problem? It it's is, easily solved. And you, you make money a, doing it. You have a camera at the beginning yeah. of the Malahat and a camera at the yeah. end and of the Malahat. And a few police cars traveling, traveling the line. And you've got it. I mean, and yet I hear that whenever they, they talk about it on CFAX, which mm -hmm. I don't listen to anymore, but right. I used to listen to, um, whenever people phoned in, right. that's what they always said. Right. Enforce the rules. Mm -hmm. And, but neither government will. The Liberals wouldn't and the NDP won't. Right. I dread going downtown. <laughs> yeah. What dreads you about downtown? I just don't f like it. I don't, I, it's, it's in, it just feels uh, very unpleasant in many ways to me. Mm -hmm. So I don't go downtown anymore. And that really bothers me. Mm -hmm. I, I used to not even, you know, you like going downtown. Right. Now well, it's I can unpleasant. say that I share that uh, sentiment with you. I rather a lot of like people downtown. Don't. And of course, I walk downtown, so that uh, adds a lot of value to my experience of downtown. I also walk downtown, which right. is why I don't like it. <laughs> oh, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Right. But uh, just to get back to the theme, my concern is what is it that um, the people who run the show want us to worry about? And I'm, uh, I'm angry and upset that the things that I ought to be uh, worried about are not, being, uh, are not front and center in our news and that the, the silly things or the things that are less impactful on all of us are the ones that get attention because they sell copy or they, if it leads, it bleeds or it makes noise. I don't think it's because it sells copy. I think there's a deliberate, the, the, media's pl the media is owned by the people who are behind all the problems, the financiers, the banks, the oil companies. So their job is not to talk about these things. Well, this does raise the question is th that why is the CBC, which is funded by the people of Canada, why is the CBC following that same formula as opposed because to Because our federal government is completely corrupt. Well, okay, that might, be the, that the might be the answer, but it certainly suggests that the CBC is kowtowing to the prevailing model of mainstream media when we ought to be having some uh, 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 an organ of information for all Canadians How that can we tells possibly the truth? have that when our governments are made up of undemocratic phonies? I mean, why would, well, our, in why our would system, Harper or Trudeau In our system, you're going to have to vote for a party that you think is the least phony. Well, we, we did. We do every time. And look where we've ended yeah. up. Uh, well, I've, I've uh, uh, yeah, I, what can I say? I dread the next election. I, I tend to vote for losers, so I have confidence <laughs> that they're probably telling me the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. That's the only, yeah, yeah. vote green. <laughs> well, that's, that's my default, yeah. 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 And, you know, exactly for that reason, at least they've never been in power, so we can have some hope that yeah, things and, will change. Yeah, uh, and we I think look we're forward time. to Are their ability to, to become corrupted as well. Yeah. yeah. Hendrick, well, thank, thank you, very you much. so much for inviting me again <laughs> yeah. to talk about the absence of dread. Yeah. And thanks for watching this segment of Citizens Forum. <laughs>